Miles Morales. He is him, Hemi Hendrix, him Jones, him and he Cricket. He is that guy. I think Spider-Man and Batman and mm, you could probably throw Wolverine in there, but between Spider-Man and Batman, those are the staples. These staples for superheroes. Miles Morales wants to be acquainted with the Snow Bunnies, by all means. If he wants to go skinny dipping in Milk of Magnesia, let him fucking do it. They literally referenced, I, I think, every piece of Spider-Man media or Spider-Man content that they could possibly reference, and I thought it was fucking amazing. Miles Morales' dad, I think, either for him making Captain or his birthday or some shit like that, like, that shit was a fucking vibe. That shit was a bop. I wanted to pop a Corona and hop up in that party. YouTube, what's good? It's your boy, b Minus TV. Today, we are talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This movie is a must-watch. It is so fire. This has probably made it on my top five, no, top three superhero movies of all time. So what now? Let's get right into it. Miles Morales. Miles Morales. He is him. Hemi Hendrix. Him Jones. Him and he Cricket. He is that guy. The way that he was taking on the arsenal of Spider-Man was fucking phenomenal. Obviously, that's not a spoiler. You guys saw it in the trailer, but he is that guy. He put in the work. Before I even get into the review, I know there's been a lot of controversy about black superheroes and black characters. Shout out to Dr. Umar. <laughs> But he basically mentioned that why is this black kid simping over a white woman? Why do all of black characters in media have interracial relationships or going after the snow bunnies? And it's like, look, first of all, that's the way the character was created. It's not like they're race swapping characters or anything like that. Miles Morales is a separate character from Peter Parker. Second of all, this is clearly a masterpiece. Like this whole movie is dripping in ethnic and black influence anyway. To be honest, to be mad at fictional characters in interracial relationships, is crazy to me. If Miles Morales wants to be acquainted with the Snow Bunnies, by all means. If he wants to go skinny dipping in Milk of Magnesia, let him fucking do it. This is probably the most diverse superhero movie, the most diverse Spider-Man movie, the most diverse Marvel movie that has ever been created. If you just gave the movie a chance, if you just let it come out, shit, if you just watched the first one into the Spider-Verse, you would already know that this movie is dripping and black influence. And you know, I love the little dynamic that Miles and Gwen had. It brings you back to a time when you were in high school, a junior high school, and you had that crush or that first love or that boyfriend and girlfriend that you were just vibing with. And maybe something was holding you guys back, but it was like you were on the same page, at least in the beginning of the movie. A little bit of spoilers coming if you haven't seen the movie already, but basically what happens is Gwen Stacy gets indicted into the freaking TVA of Webheads, the fucking Legion of Doom for Spider-Man, and they basically kind of watch all of the incursions in the multiverse. Hey, yo, I got to shout out to Gwen Stacy, Spider-Gwen. You know she is one of the top, if not the top superhero that all the thought nerds dress up as as Halloween or going to Comic-Cons. Gwen Stacy was putting in that work, especially in the beginning of the movie. Now, I'm going to keep it there as far as like spoilers and shit like that. Um, obviously, it's not too much. You can see it through the trailer. But man... They literally referenced, I think, every piece of Spider-Man media or Spider-Man content that they could possibly reference, and I thought it was fucking amazing. And there were so many different versions of Spider-Man, a lot that I've never seen before. Like, we had Top Boy Spider-Man from freaking London. We had a female Spider-Man with fucking hips, like, looked like it had a BBL. Mm, 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 mm. It was like, yo, this is fucking Dope. You know, I personally give Sony a lot of shit for their Spider-Man movies, but what they have done with Tom Holland and kind of combining with the MCU and Disney, and also what they're doing with their animated series with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse, and then the next movie that's coming out, phenomenal. Like, DC used to be the king. DC Comics, DC Animation used to be the king of the animated superhero movies. They had that shit on lock. Not anymore. This movie was a fucking contender. For me, the best animated movie that I've ever seen. Forget Pixar, forget DreamWorks. This shit was amazing. The fight scenes were on point. I was sitting at the edge of my seat on some scenes. Think about that, sitting on the edge of my seat. I can't remember the last time I did that for a Marvel movie um, after Endgame. 
I was literally like, holy shit, holding my breath. Motherfuckers are swinging everywhere. Like the, the, the depths and the heights of everything. Spider-Man is one of the coolest superheroes ever. It, like it has to be said. I think Spider-Man and Batman and mm, you could probably throw Wolverine in there. But between Spider-Man and Batman, those are their staples. These staples for superheroes. It's bad! It's bad! It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Now, go, going into what you see in the trailers, there's obviously some reason that Miles Morales isn't being led into this Legion of Doom of Spider-Man, the Council of Webheads. And there's actually a really, really good reason on uh, why he's not. Again, I'm going to let you guys watch it. But I was like, holy shit, like, that is a reasonable answer to why in the trailer all of these spider-man especially spider-man 2099 does not want him and they're chasing him basically out of this specific area where all the freaking spider-man hang out and yo oh my god i can't even like i don't even want to spoil it too much i want to give you guys a chance to go see it but, but picture this they literally reference every single spider-man movie from the Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield movies, obviously Tom Holland. They reference uh, Venom movies, like everything. There's little like uh, Easter eggs and gifts and trinkets like throughout the movie that you could spot that some things are like playing as day in your face and other shit is like, oh shit, they put this in here? Yo, this is fucking dope. Like it, there was literally people screaming in the movie theater when I was fucking in there and I haven't felt like that energy in a little bit. So it was actually pretty cool seeing that. And again, anybody that's complaining about the interracial relationship and shit about super like they don't watch these movies they, they they don't read the comics like if you were to watch the first movie or even this one miles morales is blackity black my man was in the fucking bodega grabbing a beef patty my man's afro was like afro in this whole movie and me myself i personally grew up with a lot of afro latinos and latinas and at kalo k shout out to you guys and this was like on brand the way miles was arguing with his parents like i feel like they emphasize this way more than what they did in the first movie there was a lot of underlying themes about you know knowing where you came from you know uh, remembering your, your your family, trying to save your family, you know, figuring out who you are under the mask, not letting people write your own story or predict your own future. Just so many different themes in this that all blended and meshed so well. And the black shit was authentic as fuck. Like that kickback that they had for Miles Morales' dad, I think either for him making Captain or his birthday or some shit like that. Like that shit was a fucking vibe. That shit was a bop. I wanted to pop a Corona and hop up in that party. The last thing that I'll mention is the end. And the last, I would say, maybe 30, 45 minutes of this movie, maybe a little bit more, were amazing. There is a cliffhanger at the end. I will say that in the, the spoiler section. I know I probably should have said spoilers before that. But there is a cliffhanger. I can't remember when a Marvel movie has had a cliffhanger. And this cliffhanger was fucking like a chef's kiss mind-blowing 1000 percent makes you want to go see the next movie you were probably already going to go see it anyway but now it's going to keep that topic of conversation like yo what the fuck is going to happen yo that shit was fucking crazy did you see that like you're going to be fucking chit-chatting with your friends for you know a couple of weeks about this shit all in all this movie was dope i highly recommend go seeing this i highly recommend go buying a ticket go to the movies miles morales is that fucking guy Gwen Stacy, you're cool too. I mean, you know, whatever. But Miles Morales is that guy. Again, this is my Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse review. If you like this video, make sure you like it, comment, sub the channel, and I will see you guys for the next video. Deuces.